If you've been considering building a new home theater, one decision that you're going to have to make is whether or not to go with a receiver to run your setup, or if you want to go with something like an AV processor and separates to get the power and signals to your speakers and display. Usually an AV receiver is your best bet for putting together a cost-effective system, but they have a lot of limitations as well. For example, you're going to be stuck with the amplification that comes built into the receiver, and you can't upgrade unless you spend more money on a model with pre-outs. But if you want more expandability and versatility without wasting money on features that you probably will never use, then you may want to consider looking into a separate processor like the one we're going to be reviewing today, the IOTA AVX17. And if you want to see why a dedicated AV processor might be the way to go if you want to get the best sound possible out of your home theater, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. Alright, so as I mentioned, today we're going to be checking out the AVX17, which is IOTA's 17-channel home cinema AV processor. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't heard of IOTA before, and that's because they're a small British hi-fi brand that isn't very well known here in the United States. With that said, they have been getting more popular here lately thanks to their separate amplifiers and other audio gear, like the PA3 stereo amp and their MP3 preamp, which is why we were really excited when IOTA wanted us to review the AVX17. So we're going to go ahead and get started by first taking a look at what's inside the box where you'll pretty much get everything you'd expect, like a basic manual, an infrared remote, a couple of boxes with cords that you'll need for the processor, and of course, the processor itself. Overall, everything was well packed, and we really like the fact that it ships with power cords for each region. Since IOTA is based in the United Kingdom, and they ship to Europe and America, it's just easier for them to provide cords for every region in order to simplify packaging on their end. You'll also get everything else that you'd expect, like a calibration microphone and three of these trigger cords for automatically turning your amplifiers or other equipment on and off. It's really nice to see that they went ahead and included these in with the unit. IOTA also sent us this Bluetooth adapter that just plugs into the back of the processor and lets you stream to the processor over Bluetooth. Unfortunately, this is not included with the unit, but has to be purchased separately on their website for an additional $45. Now that we have the processor out of the box, I also want to mention that we were really impressed by just how nice the AVX17 looks in person. The build quality is great. For example, the entire front panel seems to be milled out of a single piece of aluminum, a lot like Emotiva amplifiers that we use in our home theater. And overall, it feels like a very high quality piece of gear. But unlike Emotiva's brushed aluminum, the IOTA has this fine sandblasted appearance in matte black that makes it not only look really nice, but it also helps to reduce any reflections coming from your room. IOTA did a great job keeping the front panel clean and simple by only including five buttons for adjusting the menus, along with a very nice weighted aluminum volume knob. You also get a mic and headphone jack, and of course, the power button. And if you're worried that the lights on the front might be a tad too bright, you can easily adjust the brightness of the panel through multiple levels of dimming, or you can just turn the lights completely off if that's what you prefer or need. It is worth mentioning that the chassis isn't a standard component height, coming in at about 2.5 units. And unfortunately, IOTA doesn't offer any kind of rack mount solution for this, so you'll have to use a shelf if you want to put it in a standard component rack like we did. Either way, looking at the back of the processor, we get a really solid lineup of ports, like the 17 independent XLR connectors for connecting every channel of this processor to an amplifier of your choice. But if you don't have amps with XLRs, you can also use the RCA outputs, which have the same signals as the XLRs. All of these connections give the processor the ability to run in either a 7.4.6 or a 9.4.4 configuration, and all four of the subwoofer outputs get the same signal, but they can be individually adjusted for volume, phase, and level. On top of that, you also get five programmable EQ settings for each sub, so you can get them dialed in perfectly for your room. Moving on, as far as video goes, you get two HDMI 2.0 18 gigabit outputs that are capable of 4K at 60 Hz with HDR10 and Dolby Vision. 
The processor also comes with a total of six HDMI 2.0 inputs, which should be more than enough for most setups. We've also got RCA outputs for a second zone, and some other ports for using stereo sources like the USB audio port, which allows for music playback from a PC. You also get an extension port for the optional Bluetooth adapter, which supports up to 24-bit streams at 48 kilohertz. Coaxial and optical inputs are also included for legacy devices. A USB 2.0 port is also provided for firmware updates. And next to that, you get two dimmer outs and two trigger outs. The dimmer outs come in handy if you're going to be using the processor with one of IOTA's matching amplifiers, which would allow you to dim the display lights on both units at the same time. And of course, the normal trigger outs would be used if you want to automatically switch your amps on and off with the processor. These are universal, so they'll work with pretty much any amplifier or device with the same trigger input connector, like our Emotivas, for example. So with all the connectors and features sorted out, we went ahead and set up the AVX-17 in our AV rack to see how well it would do with our equipment. I'll be using this processor with our Emotiva UPA-1 and XPA amplifiers to power my speakers, and as a source, we have an NVIDIA Shield Pro. On the video side of things, we've been testing this processor with a few different projectors, like the Epson LS12000 that we're currently reviewing. But of course, the AVX17 only has HDMI 2.0, so we can't test things like 4K 120 on it. We've also used this with the Bowmaker Polaris and my old Panasonic projector, but for the rest of this video, we'll be using the Epson. And that brings us to what I feel is one of the best things about this processor, and that's its sound quality. We listened to a bunch of different movies and TV shows throughout the time that we had this processor from lots of different sources like Netflix, Plex, and our own Dolby Atmos Blu-ray collection. And I have to say that I was very impressed with what the AVX-17 had to offer. Once it was all set up, we noticed this processor had really good channel separation. Vocals from my center channel were much better than what I was used to hearing from my Integra processor, and I never felt like I had to turn the volume up to hear the dialogue and then back down because the action scenes were too loud. You asked me once if I had told you everything there was to know about my adventures. Bass reproduction also sounded excellent, which is another area that we noticed a marked improvement over the Integra. And a lot of this has to do with the bass management options that you get with the AVX-17. The four independently adjustable subwoofer outputs were really useful for fine-tuning the subs and getting them dialed in exactly to our liking. And of course, being that this is a Dolby Atmos processor, we also got a chance to try out our new OSD Black in-ceiling speakers, which are being powered by an Emotiva Basex A5 amplifier, and this was actually our first time experience in true Dolby Atmos here in our theater. Watching movies like Spider-Man No Way Home, which in our opinion has a really well-mixed soundtrack already, the Atmos channel just added an extra level of immersion, and the AVX-17 did a great job of positioning objects and sounds around the room. And it's that pinpoint accuracy that helps make this whole experience that much more convincing. And honestly, to us, the sound quality is what really matters when it comes to home theater gear. Whether it's a processor or a receiver, if you're not happy with the sound, it's always going to be in the back of your mind while you're trying to enjoy your system. And in our opinion, this is one area that the AVX-17 really shines. Unfortunately, the AVX-17 falls a little short when it comes to the user interface. As you can see, it looks pretty outdated, and some parts of it are honestly a bit clunky. But overall, it does offer a lot of features and adjustability that we really like. Aside from all the usual settings like speaker levels, distances, and crossovers, you also get a very capable multi-band parametric EQ. All of these adjustments allowed us to manually dial in our speakers, and as we've mentioned in our other videos, that's how we prefer to set up our system rather than using the built-in room correction software. Now we know that not using room correction is a bit controversial, but we feel that unless it's part of a larger calibration utility, like Dirac or Anthem ARC, 
Most of the time we have to go back and undo a lot of the settings that the automatic calibration didn't get right. Of course, your experience may be different from ours, and if it's worked for you in the past, then by all means, go ahead and use it. Now, since we've been talking about the user interface and software that's built into this processor, I also want to quickly mention something that we noticed while we were doing our research for this review, and that's the fact that this IOTA processor seems to have a very similar, if not identical, user interface to the Tone Winner AT300. We also noticed that the remotes that ship with both the Tone Winner and the IOTA are identical as well, and this made us wonder just how alike the two might be on the inside. So we took the top off the IOTA, and again we noticed the boards are very similar which leads us to believe that this is more than likely being made by Tone Winner. And we're certainly not saying that that's a bad thing. Lots of companies use OEM manufacturers to build their products, and we think that the excellent sound quality that we experience from the AVX-17 just goes to show that they are a very capable company. With that said, there were some issues that we ran into during our time testing the AVX-17 that we feel should be addressed. The first thing we noticed was an HDMI handshake issue with our older Panasonic projector, where it sometimes took up to 45 seconds before a picture could be displayed on the screen. This wasn't as bad with the newer Epson LS12000 projector taking about 20 seconds for the picture from the Nvidia Shield Pro to handshake with the processor and then with the projector. We also had a strange issue with our Nvidia Shield randomly crashing and rebooting while connected to the AVX17. Again, this never happened with our old processor, so we're pretty sure it's not an issue with the Shield itself. Hopefully this and the other issues that we experience can be addressed with future firmware updates. So those are pretty much the only issues that we experienced while using the AVX-17. For us, these aren't really deal breakers, but in the end, you're going to have to decide whether these issues would keep you from considering this processor. In our opinion though, coming in at $1,900 US dollars, the AVX-17 is a really good processor if you want to get into the world of separates without spending several thousands of dollars. So if you're in the market for a new AV processor, we definitely recommend putting the IOTA AVX-17 at the top of your list. And with that said, it's time to go ahead and wrap up this video. Let us know what you think about this processor. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.